setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. So I think we're live. Hi, everybody. I'm Bernadette Wagner. I am here today for our Mindful Monday, our weekly Mindful Monday with Dr. Casey Breslin. Casey is a graduate of uh, Towson University. Uh, she did her master's and her PhD at Auburn. Casey is a self-described technology nerd, but not only that, Casey is interested in making education opportunities accessible to everyone through technology. Today, she's gonna to be talking about the importance of the COVID vaccine and how we can use technology to register for that. So welcome, Casey, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Bernadette. I'm really excited to share this information with anyone who will listen because I, um, I'm also the mother of three children under five, one of whom is a pandemic baby, um, meaning I labored and delivered a baby during the height of the COVID, COVID pandemic. So um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to share with your viewers um, a couple of tips that are true no matter where you live that might help you um, take control over, where, over your ability to register for the coronavirus vaccine. So Casey, the, the, one of the things that is making it difficult for people right now is there's not one set way uh, in each state or in e uh, or even in each county within within one state. And so you're in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I uh, was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how they're registering people for the vaccine and in particular, the importance to make sure that your contact information is correct. Yeah, so, um, you know, one of the things that I think a lot of people are feeling is this anxiety about like, what can I do in this moment to make sure that my, that I and my loved ones can have access to the coronavirus vaccine whenever our prioritization category manifests. So Anne Arundel County, um, Friday, the big cool announcement was that they were gonna begin this week rolling out um, vaccines to what is called category 1B, um, which is uh, independently living older adults above the age of 75, which expands the access beyond healthcare workers and um, people living in communal settings that are above the age of 65. So this is like the second phase of the rollout. Correct, this is the second phase of the rollout. And that's super exciting um, for so many people. And uh, you know, Maryland is now saying that teachers can be part of 1B, so this is great. Um, and there's local jurisdictions that are having various calls where they're talking about you know, how to register for things. But what I wanna really focus on is something that's um, true for just about everyone. Um, and you know, a lot of us uh, look at the prioritization categories and say like, well, I'm this age, but I have this health, pre-existing health condition. And so like, I'm not sure where I fit in the prioritization categories. And I would really like to be able to get my COVID shot whenever I can. Um, so the tool that I wanna talk about is your online medical records platform. So when you go to your healthcare provider and you um, usually at checkout, they try to give you papers and they say to you, do you want this via the, um, the my chart or the my portfolio? Um, platform. So it's, it can be an app on your phone. It can also be a website that you log into and it's home to your medical records. Um, so just what I want to talk about is the steps that you can take to make sure that your online medical records form looks as beautiful as it can so that when it's your turn to get the um, COVID vaccine and if your healthcare provider is a place that's administering the vaccine, you can use that tool to schedule your own appointment. Um, right. So if you don't, uh, the other thing is, if you have uh, an online medical record, um, I, it, my understanding, Casey, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that healthcare providers will reach out to you and let you know that you are now eligible. Yeah, so um, I have a really large Irish Catholic family kind of spread throughout the country. And so um, a prime example of this is that my, my aunt lives in upstate New York. And um, I reached out to her last week and, and talked to her about checking her online medical records. And when she went in and logged in and did that, she realized that, um, oh, my husband is eligible for the vaccine right now because of where they are in their, in their vaccine distribution. Um, so she was like, oh, this is exciting. He can get one right now. And then she looked and it said, you know, places where he could go get the vaccine. And she's like, oh, there's a, there's a site right down the street. 
And then she kept reading and they, it said, oh, and we're calling patients that are 75 plus to schedule the appointment. And she was like, well, why haven't I received the call for my husband? The phone number listed in her online medical record was wrong. Right, so right. That, that's not a fault of the hospital. And the believe me, the hospital uh, medical workers and the appointment schedulers are trying really hard to get people in to get their vaccines. Um, I have a friend that works in a hospital in another state and he was saying that they're doing four hour shifts every day where they just call patients in their system that are not registered for online medical records and are trying to get those patients in to get the shot. So I think that Casey, that puts a little bit of the onus, a little bit of the responsibility on each person to make sure that their medical record is current. Yes, so let's talk about the steps that we can do to do that. So um, your healthcare provider or your hospital probably has access, um, it has uh, on their website, a link um, to like the hospital name, my uh, patient resources. And when you go there, it's gonna say, usually the hospital names and either my chart or my portfolio. Um, so for example, in Anne Arundel County, we have two hospitals there. Um, the one platform is, run by the University of Maryland um, and their platform is University of Maryland, my portfolio. And the other one is um, Anne Arundel Medical Center, which is uh, a, a MyChart platform. So you're gonna look for, for that link. And then there will be a link to either check if you already have an account, and many people already have an account, um, but there are people that will not have an account. And there might be a, a link that you can go ahead and, and try to create your account straight through that patient resources page. Um, or there might be a phone number that's listed for you to call to set up your online medical records account through my chart, my portfolio at your provider's office. Um, if you're going to call, know that you're probably going to spend some time on hold. And that's just a function of how hard those offices are working to try to get people to come in and get their COVID shots. Um, so that's the first step is, do you have that account? Um, this and, and, uh, Casey, I just no. didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, I think one of the things is frequently people have an account, but they don't remember their access code or their ID. Correct. So I was going to say, step two, do you know your username and password? Um, right. So you've got to get that and you've got to write it down or, or keep, I mean, they say don't write it down for cybersecurity purposes, but you've got to make sure that you keep a hold of that information. Um, for a little while until you're able to get the COVID vaccine, because um, you know you the way that this tool works is there's often a tool within the platform that allows you to schedule the appointment yourself, so you can click through and, and schedule your own appointment. So first, I want you to check and, and make sure you got the username and password, and then the next thing I, I really would encourage you to do is to look and make sure that your personal demographics information is as complete and accurate and up to date as possible. Um, I've had three babies in the last five years, for whatever reason, every time when I go to the OBGYN, something is off with my address. I don't know how that happens, but software has glitches. So just check it and then check it again to make sure that your stuff is as complete as possible. Um, and the reason why that is so important is because on the back end, the hospital software, or the software running this online medical platform, they can turn things on and off based on what the data says. So based on what your phone number or your zip code, um, they might be able to turn on the online scheduling tool or not. Um, I can't say for certainty that's happening in Anne Arundel County. Um, I just was reading over the weekend that in Washington DC, they are releasing um, more vaccines to certain parts of the city, trying to drive down um, the mortality affiliated with this pandemic. Okay, so uh, just I'm just keeping some notes here. So the first thing to do is to contact your healthcare provider, make sure you have a my chart or equivalent account, then to make sure you have your uh, pass user uh, name and uh, password available. What would the third step be, Casey? I want you to check your, your demographics information. So your name, your address, um, if you were to change your insurance or move, this would be where you would go and update that information. Just check it and make sure that it's as complete and accurate and up-to-date as possible. Okay. And step four. Step four, um, you know, if you have a beloved older adult or someone with limited internet access in your life, if there's any way that you can help them access this. Now, everybody has access to online medical records hypothetically, um, 
different jurisdictions have another way of registering people for the coronavirus vaccine. So in Anne Arundel County, there's a form that you can fill out and you enter in some personal data and then they'll send you an email or a phone call when it's your when they have shots through the health department available. Um, but this is this what we're talking about on this call is more like if you are seeing um, say a cardiologist for routine maintenance care and the cardiologist is now allowed to deploy vaccines, they're going to have a way to reach you without having to call you personally. Um, so it's just reducing the burden on healthcare workers. Okay. And Casey, uh, real quickly, um, this is an important thing. If you know somebody or, uh, you know, if people are listening to this and they don't have access to uh, a computer or they don't have internet or whatever, uh, they don't have a smartphone. Right. How can they register for the vaccine? So the different jurisdictions are, all have a phone number to call and in hospitals that are also helping to um, administer the vaccines have a phone number to call. And so part of why I felt it was so important to come on this and talk about it is, you know, um, most likely if you're watching this video, you have internet access, right? right. It's an internet based platform. Um, so if you can take the steps to register via the internet for you personally, or for a beloved loved one that you are entrusted to help with their medical care. Um, and you can avoid calling that phone number that, that these offices also are providing to schedule the vaccines. You are making it possible so that people that don't have the internet access can use the tool that's there for them to use. Um, I know that in some places, you know, I'm an adult child, right? Like I, I'm an adult, but I have parents who are living and, and I would love for them to get the vaccine. And I have friends who called and called and called last week to try to get their parents scheduled an appointment. Um, but when we do things like that, we're making it harder for those without internet access to use this tool to, to get this medication that, or this vaccine that they would really like. So if you can do this, it, it really does help lots of people, not just well, yourself. Right, right. And you know, Casey, I know that you are passionate about this because uh, you said to me the other day when we were speaking about setting this uh, Mindful Monday session up, that you want things to get back to normal. You, you want to make sure people aren't dying unnecessarily. You want your, your little one to go to kindergarten in the fall and interact with children. And the most important thing to make those happen is to get shots in the arm, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because if we can get shots in arms and we can get um, people to develop antibodies to fight this pandemic that way. We are preventing death. We are preventing sickness, disability. We are preventing lots of um, grief for the healthcare workers that are trying so hard right now to help keep everyone safe. Um, so this is just one thing you can do from your couch if you have internet access and have these skills to help make it better for everyone. Right. And another thing, if we all get vaccines and we build this herd immunity, we can get back to normal. We can open our gyms and our salons and our restaurants and, you know, regain that normalcy that we're all craving so much. Oh, definitely. My my almost kindergartner has lots of plans for when the vaccine is, <laughs> when everybody gets their pincher. So if you can all just take these steps to make it easier to get your pincher, it would really be wonderful for everyone. Well, Casey, thank you so much for your time and for uh, being part of Prime Time for Women's Mindful Monday. I hope that this information um, really uh, empowers people to take these steps. And uh, Casey, I, if I could just ask you one last favor, uh, if you could write those steps down, I'd be happy to post them below this um, Facebook post. Yes, I would love that because I know okay. this was a juicy conversation and people, I am one of those people that needs to read as well. Yeah. So well, thank, thank you. you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. I'm done. All right. They're ready.